Let's start Y carriage and heat bed assembly. Prepare heat bed, heat bed cable red, heat bed cable black, two M3 by 10 screws, two M3W washers, and two M3NN nuts. For the following steps, prepare the ends of the cables without the label. Place the black wire above the pin with the G and D sign. Use the end of the cable that is not labeled with QR code. Place the M3W washer above the round cable connector. Press the M3x10 screw through all parts. Attach the M3NN nut onto the M3x10 screw and tighten it slightly. Turn the heat bed back around. Using the universal wrench and the allen key, tighten up the screw. Repeat this procedure for the second red VCC wire. The cables should be slightly inclined towards each other. Take nylon 2x380, heat bed cable cover bottom, heat bed cable cover top, 3M 3x10 screws, 3M 3N nuts and textile sleeve 5x350. Insert 3M 3N nuts into the shaped openings in the heat bed cable cover bottom. Push the heat bed thermistor cable through the heat bed cable cover bottom. Insert the nylon filament into the hole in the heat bed cable cover bottom. Don't let the nylon filament stick out too much on the other side. It should not protrude more than 2 mm. Orient the curve of the filament towards the bed. Slide the cable cover bottom under the heat bed cable connectors. Secure the cover with the M3x10 screw from the top. Tighten the screw firmly. Wrap the end of the cable bundle together with the nylon filament in the textile sleeve. Slide the sleeve as far towards the heat bed as possible. Attach the heat bed cable cover top onto the junction and secure it with two M3x10 screws. On the bottom side, leave a slack on the thermistor cable for one finger to be pushed through. Make sure there is no big gap between both covers. Finish wrapping the cable bundle in the textile sleeve. Take three LM8 UU bearings, Y carriage, three bearing clips, three rubber bearing pads 31 by 16, three plastic bearing pads 31 by 16 by 0.5 and six M3 by 8 screws. Take Prusa lubricant applicator, Prusa lubricant and several paper towels. Lubricate each bearing. Push two M3 by 8 screws through the bearing clip. Insert the rubber bearing pad on the screws. Then insert the plastic bearing pad on the screws. Repeat the same for the remaining two bearing clips. Note the three pockets for bearings in the Y carriage. Start with the side with the one pocket. Attach the bearing clip on the cutout. Insert the bearing into the bearing clip. When placing bearings onto the Y carriage, make sure the rows of balls are oriented as letter X just like before. Maintain the bearing position and slightly tighten both screws. Attach two bearing clips on the remaining two bearing pockets and push two bearings inside. Unlike the previous single bearing, position the bearings as close to the center of the Y carriage as possible. Now take 4 wire rod holders, 12 M3x10 screws, 12 M3 and S nuts and 2 smooth rods 8x330. Using a paper towel, wipe the transport oil from the surface of the smooth rods. Carefully insert the rods straight into the bearings. Tighten the screws on each bearing clip. After the final tightening, the movement of the smooth rods must be gentle. Take one wire rod holder and insert two M3NS nuts. Insert one M3NS nut from the side of the wire rod holder. 
Repeat for the remaining wire rod holders. Push one of the wire rod holders onto the rod. Align the front surface of the plastic part with the flat surface of the rod. Take the Y carriage including smooth rods with the rod holders and place them in the YZ frame. Make sure the two bearings are on the left side. Secure each wire rod holder and fix them with M3 by 10 screws on the front plate. Tighten both screws equally but not completely. We will tighten them fully later on. Insert the M3 by 10 screw into the hole in each front holder and tighten them. Insert the M3 by 10 screw into the hole in each rear holder and tighten it as well. Move the Y carriage back and forth across the entire length of the smooth rods to align them. Then move the carriage to the front plate and tighten all the screws in the front Y holders. Move the Y carriage to the rear plate and tighten all the screws in the back Y holders. Take Y belt tensioner with an oval hole, Y belt holder with a hexagonal hole, 1 M3 by 40 screw, 4 M3 by 10 screws, 1 M3 and N nut, GT220 pulley, pin H8 2.9 by 20, and Y belt. Insert the M3 and N nut into the Y belt holder. Link the printer onto the right side. Push the pin into the pulley and center it. Take one of the Y belt ends and push it into the Y belt holder. The teeth must be away from you. Secure it by inserting and tightening the M3 by 10 screw. Using the M3 by 10 screw, fix the Y belt holder to the Y carriage. Use the left hole in the center part. Guide the Y-axis belt around the Y-axis motor pulley and make sure the belt is inside the frame and not under. Take the free end of the Y-belt guiding from the pulley and push it into the groove in the Y-belt tensioner. Secure it with the M3 by 10 screw. Take the free end of the belt and guide it around the pulley. Insert the belt with the pulley into the Y-belt idler on the rear of the front plate. Push the pulley all the way inside the printed part and lightly pull on the belt to lock the pulley in place. Insert the M3x10 screw into the Y-belt tensioner and try if the screw reaches the threaded hole in the Y carriage when tensioning the belt. Insert the M3x40 screw into the Y-belt tensioner and tighten it until the screw reaches the nut in the second part. Move the heat bed to the rear position. Place the phone's microphone near the Y-axis belt. Repeatedly strum the upper part of the belt with your finger. Make sure that both the top and bottom parts of the belt are parallel, directly above each other. Tighten both screws on the pulley. Take 8 expansion joints and 8 M3x6R screws. Install 8 M3x6R screws in the outer holes of the Y carriage. Do not tighten them completely. Slide the expansion joint from the side on the M3x6R screw. Maintain the position and tighten the M3x6R screw. Proceed the same for the rest of the expansion joints. Take 8 M3x4BT screws, 1 M3x14BT screw and spacer 6x3.1x8mm. Place the spacer onto the Y carriage and align it with the hole in the center. Put the heat bed on the Y carriage and secure it by the M3x14BT screw. Do not fully tighten the screw yet. Insert the M3x4BT screws into the remaining holes in the heat bed. Do not fully tighten the screws yet. 
After all screws are in place, tighten them in the following sequence. Center screw, first four screws on the edges, last four screws on the corners. Take heat bed cable holder, two M3x6 screws and two power terminal screws. Push the heat bed cables and heat bed thermistor cable through the square opening on the back of the body box. Push the filament through the circle hole right below the square opening. Place the black heat bed cable on the left terminal and secure it with the terminal screw. Place the red heat bed cable on the right terminal and secure it as well. Connect the heat bed thermistor cable to the bodyboard. Attach the heat bed cable holder to the body box. The cable bundle must be pointing up, secured by tightening both M3x6 screws firmly. Check your electronics connection once more. From left to right we have X-axis motor, Y-axis motor, Z motor left and Z motor right, LCD cable, extruder main cable, power panic, PE cable, PSU power cables, black, red, black, red, heat bed thermistor and heat bed power cables. Take Wi-Fi module, one M3x6 screw and Wi-Fi cover. Be very careful when handling and connecting the ESP module to avoid bending and damaging the pins. Grab the Wi-Fi module by the edges of the board and plug its pins in the 8-hole slot in the body box. Cover the ESP module with the Wi-Fi cover. Secure it with the M3x6 screw. Take body box cover, 4 M3x6 screws, L box cover and 2 M3x10 screws. Push 2 M3x10 screws through the L box cover. Secure the L box cover by tightening both M3x10 screws to the body box. Align the body box cover with the body box and secure it with 4 M3x6 screws. To assemble double spool holder, we'll need center part and two side arms. Take the arm on the right side, insert it gently in the main part and start to rotate clockwise. It should take about half the turn to lock the part in place. Take the arm on the left side, insert it in the main part and start to rotate anti-clockwise. Take filament guide, two filament guide PTFE tubes, three M3M nuts, one M3x18 screw and two M3x10 screws. Insert two M3N nuts into the openings. Insert two PTFE tubes into the openings as well. Fix the tubes in place with two M3x10 screws from the other side. Insert the third M3N nut into the opening on the side. Attach the spool holder onto the middle of the printer's frame. Make sure the spool holder is inclined towards the back of the printer. Attach the filament guide onto the spool holder. Fix the guide in place using M3x18 screw. Attach the sheet by first aligning the rear cutout with the locking pins on the back of the heat bed. Hold it by the front two corners and slowly lay it down onto the heat bed. Insert the USB drive with the latest firmware file into the printer. Connect the power cable and connect the printer into a wall outlet. Now turn the power button on. That's it, you've made it! You've assembled Prusa MK4 3D printer. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any words to say, drop a comment down below in the word box.